My name is Sarah Brzozowskis and I'm the Story Booth School Coordinator for the Manitoba Mucklux Story Booth School. The Story Booth School is a national charitable organization uh, with a focus on teaching the traditional art of mukluk and moccasin making. Um, so our program, it actually started in 2013 by the founder of Manitoba Mucklucks, Sean McCormick. Um, and it was his way of uh, giving back for these, you know, thousands of year old um, designs, you know, the, the muckluck and moccasin, that, that specific design of our ancestors. Um, that was his way of giving back to our ancestors, thinking, you know, what would, what would they want to see happen? And, um, you know, most importantly, I think it's that, that sharing and that inter, intergenerational um, sharing of knowledge and um, kind of our, our history. You know, part of our focus in uh, teaching this this program, the Mucklock and Moccasin Making, is we're really hoping to see this kind of spark the next generation of great Indigenous um, artists. Um, and we, we uh, very intentionally choose not to call Mucklock and Moccasin Making um, a craft or crafters um, because it kind of has this connotation that it's something anyone can do at home with, say, popsicle sticks or something like that. So um, it really is an, an art form um, and uh, we really want to bring it into the forefront as something that is, you know, a fine art and something that you you pay uh, good money for um, and that is uh, really highly regarded in our, uh, not only Indigenous culture, but, uh, you know, to, with, within our, our country, so. Some of the ways that we measure our success are, um, you know, an, an annual and, and quarterly review of grad surveys. Um, and student surveys, just you know, kind of assessing um, how they uh, how they experienced the program and um, what maybe they would like to see done differently in the future. Um, we also uh, review our, our KPIs and metrics, um, and just like to see you know how we've grown. Uh, so uh, we're really happy to say that uh, we were able to pay our instructors fifty thousand uh, dollars last year, and this is something that kind of grows with each year as we're able to expand our programming and our reach. Um, so we, we've also seen uh, over 2,000 students graduate the Story Boot School, so, um, which is really, really amazing, something that we're really proud of. Um, just knowing that you know, each of these students have not only gone home with their own pair of mucklucks or moccasins, um, but they have that knowledge now to uh, pass those, those teachings along to their, their future children or their siblings or, um, yeah, something, something that you know, we really hold dear. And so our target age range is uh, Indigenous youth, uh, particularly. Um, so t I think typically that's about anywhere from, you know, 12 up to 21. Um, but we found was there was a lot of interest uh, between 21 and uh, 30 years old. Uh, so what we were, what we decided to do was kind of extend our, um, uh, our, uh, kind of our, uh, definition of Indigenous youth up to 30 years old. Um, so our focus is uh, Indigenous youth um, and we offer free programming for anyone who falls within that, that range. Um, but actually within the last year we also opened up our programming to include general admissions, so you know non-Indigenous participants, non-youth participants, um, but we always reserve half of our seats for Indigenous youth um, and because that is still our, our primary target and our goal is to, to reach these youth and um, kind of help form and spark that, that creativity. Um, uh, one of the, the benefits of you know introducing the general programming is uh, obviously that that cross-cultural sharing and um, you know understanding when you have everyone sitting together in a room your hands are busy um, you're kind of chatting about your day and um, you know a lot of discussion just naturally happens um, and then uh, obviously it's it's also that uh, economic generator for our uh, indigenous instructors as well so um, we're still reaching the same amount, if not more, um, of Indigenous youth with our programming, but we're also able to double the amount of classes that we, we hold, um, which increases that um, uh, increases the amount of teaching opportunities for our instructors. We do our best to um, have youth uh, attend with, you know, parents, uh, caregivers in some cases, 
um, siblings, cousins. Um, oftentimes, even if our class is, is fully booked, we'll, we'll make space for someone who is a family member um, because we, we love to see that, um, that sharing with, with people who have those, you know, those familial ties. Um, I think we've really uh, seen firsthand the, uh, the impact of our efforts in uh, you know, a lot of the, the faces that are just filled with pride and um, you know, just absolutely beaming, not, not, having, not realizing that they were able to actually, um, you know, from start to finish, create something that they're able to wear and um, you know, is, is so closely connected to um, our roots and our, our history as, as Indigenous people. Um, the other um, the other piece is that um, our programming has grown uh, substantially within the last uh, six years, where we are now um, we're a national program. We hold classes throughout the year here in Winnipeg at the Manitoba Mucklucks headquarters, as well as the uh, year round at the Bata Shoe Museum in Toronto. Um, we also hold pop up classes nationally with different. Um, within different universities, um, cultural um, centers, um, and, and directly on First Nations. Um, so we've actually been able to visit um, several First Nations uh, here in Manitoba and with the hopes of you know, continually, continuing to expand that just across Canada. In our programming with, with Mukluk and Moccasin making, um, something that I've learned and that I've seen firsthand is uh, it's really not just the construction or making of a Mukluk or Moccasin. Um, the programming really does teach um, a sense of pride and, um, you know, it also kind of ignites this creative spark and um, this artistic um, side out, out of a lot of, pulls that out of a lot of our participants. Um, and with the youth especially, I think it's it really is, um, you know, that there's that really big, um, really big sense of achievement. Um, so, mukluk and moccasin making is something that's um, it's highly intricate, and uh, a lot of hard work and time and energy goes into each stitch and each bead. Um, you know, anywhere from 20 hours, probably at a minimum. Um, up to you know 50 hours will go into your first pair of mukluks. Um, so that's something a lot of a lot of youth don't realize when they sign up for the program. Uh, we see a lot of frustrations voiced and expressed throughout the process. Um, but what what comes of, at the end of it is just this um, amazing sense of accomplishment and pride and you know not only in their in themselves but um, in, in their culture and um, this appreciation for uh, their history and um, yeah with with each stitch it, it really does kind of connect you to your ancestors and um, you know you can think about uh, the fact that they, they were doing this thousands of years ago and it's um, kind of a tangible connection to that that history. Through the school a lot of friendships form and um, you know even uh, our instructors as well as myself have kind of kept in touch with a lot of our participants and um, a lot of them still continue to sew and make mugluks and moccasins and um, we see them actually um, turning them that into a micro uh, business and and selling their work and you know getting better and better and you know using those um, those simple um, those simple steps that we teach in the beginning, kind of the, the basics of sewing, um, the basics of sewing, the basics of beading and, and designing a mukluk, um, and them applying those skills and, and learning more and kind of continuing that journey on their own. Um, we've seen participants actually teach their, their younger children how to how to start making their own pairs of mukluks and moccasins, um, which is really amazing because that's, you know, really our, our goal is that continuity. Um, and obviously we're, we're here to teach these classes because that continuity is something that that's been broken you know thanks um, to the effects of, of residential schools so um, we're here to kind of um, insert ourselves in, and and uh, teach teach the 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 steps of, of mukluk and moccasin making teach this art um, but then the hope is that the the knowledge will continue long after we've gone um, and that uh, you know that that continues being passed on for future generations I think Indigenous education is really just the sharing of uh, that Indigenous knowledge, um, passing it forward to future generations. Um, and I think a really important aspect of that, um, at least for us in the Story Boots School, is that that 
that um, knowledge is, is actually shared from directly from a, a First Nations person or an Indigenous person um, that is, you know, whether it's an artist or elder, um, but it's uh, kind of passing it forward um, uh, just, you know, generationally. So. Where we uh, where we hope to see the Story Boot School um, in the future is uh, as part of uh, part of part of a curriculum. So in the school systems, you know, Mukluk and moccasin making becoming something that um, is almost commonplace and uh, something that that youth will be learning. Um, <clears throat> uh, we also we also hope to develop a uh, a digital archive, so an online curriculum that's easily accessible, um, and that anyone can can learn from home. You know how to make their own pair of mukluks or moccasins, um, learn a little bit about the history, and hear stories from different artists and elders about their experiences and um, kind of the the meaning behind each each stitch or each um, particular design or. Um, the, the style of, of work that they create. Um, we would also love to uh, visit different different First Nations communities across Canada to kind of develop um, develop that curriculum so that we have you know some, a specific design that's unique to you know the Ojibwe people or the Cree people, Diné and so forth. I think our, our vision uh, I think that we would like to to see indigenous education become something that's a lot more commonplace and um, you know, is, is a, a bigger part of the, the school curriculums uh, in general. So. Absolutely. Um, so one of our visions for the future as well is to um, include um, or have our, our education uh, tied in with, with um, land-based knowledge and, um, you know, not simply handing all of our students the leather that they use to make their mukluks and moccasins, but, um, you know, starting from the very beginning, so with um, hunting of the, the animal and um, the actual hide tanning, having that become part of our curriculum as well. So um, they're learning those skills that, um, from start to finish, uh, create the, the footwear, the mukluks and moccasins, and it's not something that you just go and, and purchase from a store necessarily, but um, we're also teaching those skills, um, those you know very real skills that help sustain our ancestors for thousands of years. So I think, I think the resources that our program would benefit from are uh, the, the knowledge, um, uh, the stories that uh, are shared with us from uh, different Indigenous artists and elders, uh, you know, representing a number of different nations. So um, we would like to sit down with, you know, people that are of, um, you know, f uh, Métis, uh, Ojibwe, Cree, Diné descent, and, and many others, and uh, learn from them what their construction techniques for um, mukluks and moccasins are, the history behind that, um, the stories that, that come with it and um, record and, and take down all of this information and develop it into our curriculum for um, future classes so that they're specific to different nations.